Would you like to be remembered as a guy who was an asshole and a gatekeeper? Or as a guy that paved the way for you to success? It takes time for someone to show their true colors. I, I believe More selfish. That, that good can overcome. I like to see people put as much emphasis on the new blood, the new generation. Mm. And show more love to small promoters who are doing the smaller venues. Because at the end of the day, I get it. They have to work their way up to get a, land a good fight on a good big card. But if it wasn't for those guys, how would they get there? What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Marvic Productions. I got my boy, Marlon Hernandez, a.k.a. Marlio. In the Marlio. building. <laughs> uh, my boy, how you doing, man? I, I feel like every time we come in, we're kind of in seek. Like, either I'm wearing black and you're wearing black, or, or look, like today bro, I'm wearing Marvick, white. It's one. It's right. one now. No I feel Diddy, like, but it's one. I feel like we're connected, We bro. used to be no separate home. entities. <laughs> now it's one, Marvick. Right. So. Like, I feel like sometimes when I call you, bro, it's like we're already in sync and we're thinking in, in this. We're, we're like, vibrating this in the same frequency where it's like, I don't even got to say something because we're, we're already thinking on the same page. Hey, he I starts think. the sentences. I finish them. <laughs> <laughs> Marvick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, nah, I'm doing good, bro. Uh, yeah. Nice. Nah, I'm happy to be here. Um, obviously. See today we got a special guest mm-hmm. and we've been trying to get him in for some time but this man is busy he's mm-hmm. got a lot of work um you know with his personal work and and his brand you know yes, with sir. his partner that we're gonna get into but uh i'm just excited to have him here finally right. we've got david in the house sports tunes that's right that's right how you doing boss we're good guys thank <laughs> you for welcoming me, me with open arms of you know, course of course a pleasure to see you guys doing your thing you know Ever since the day I saw your guys' clips, I was like, I got to get in with these dudes because they, they look like they're the real deal. Oh, thank you, man. Hey, bro, and that means a lot, bro, because honestly, the, the, I, I could I could genuinely say that you've been there from the beginning of Marvick Productions. Like, you were one of the first persons to hit us up, reach out to us, and Marlon and I were just looking at each other like, who is this guy? Like, why, why is he being so genuine with us and so generous? And, and I appreciate that, bro, because, you know, growing up, um, we, we'll get into it, but obviously you, you and your partner, Jose, have a, have a company by the name of Mo Boxing, No Problems. And um, people that know me know that I love boxing. You know, I've grown up with the sport and you were that person, bro, that, that connected me to the boxing world. And uh, I just want to say thank you for that, bro, because, you know, to be able to be in the same room like Jose Castillo, you know, Fernando Vargas, foods that I grew up watching and to be able to have a conversation with them and to be like Jose Castillo giving me his number and, yo, this is where I live. Whenever you're in Sonora, I come through like, dog, like I never would have ever thought this shit was possible type shit. So I want to thank you for that, man. And I'm excited to have you here. Yeah, me, me too, man. If I can add, I mean, I haven't I didn't experience what he experienced, you know, by going to these events and stuff. Not because I wasn't. I, I just couldn't, you know, and, and, you know, like he said, he's more of a fan of the sport and. Um, but just, I'm I'm right behind him. I'm you know starting to really enjoy the sport and, and learn more about it and really appreciate it. I think I'm one of those people that grew up thinking boxing is a scam and everything's rigged, so I didn't have respect for it. But lately, you know, from Marvic and Victor and even people like yourself, like I'm really starting to like truthfully or genuinely enjoy it. You know, where I'm not even like bored like i'm actually looking forward you know we talk about like buying a fight you know i'm actually putting money now like i want to see this but um yeah going back to it man i I do remember me and victor chopping it up about you initially and i think we even shared this with you on a phone call but um it was it was it was weird because you reached out you know for the record this guy david reaches out to us when we first launched marvic productions and i don't even think we were called marvic but we we're called marvic podcast back yeah. then whatever mm-hmm. and Marvin you know and victor podcast something like that and david reaches out and you know he was very nice he was very nice uh, through the dms and i remember me and vic got on a call and we were like we got to be careful we got to be careful with um, you know, not know. just not just David, but just, you know, we because it's business, you know, it's mm-hmm. like we, we understand business. We understand that, you know, when people come to you and offering services, there's usually some strings attached. There's usually well, like, well, what's the catch? You know, so I remember me and Victor is like, yeah, let's hear him out. You know, like you, you sent us a message like trying to collab and trying to help us out. And of course, we appreciated that. But we're like. But there's something up here, you know, mm-hmm. and I got to say, man, like fast forward, like 
this guy David, just to echo what Victor was just saying, like he he's a real one. Like you truthfully from the beginning, like you were you were very generous, you're very kind. You didn't know us. You didn't have to be, but you know, and I'm curious to learn more and hear more about like what did actually make you want to reach out to us. I think it was the interview we launched with Raul, that Raul first one that Raul. maybe caught your attention a little bit. But um you're you're one of very few people to have done that. You know, and, and we get a lot of love. Hey, man, we love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. It's one thing to show love, which we appreciate. I'm not saying, you know, that that's a little thing. Like, we appreciate everybody's love there. But you have, like, open doors. What people don't know is you've given us access to certain events. You've connected mm-hmm. us to certain people. Um, and and you've gone, you've gone the extra mile. Right. You know, you, were, you actually, it's not just your words, but there's a lot of action behind there. So... I'm very grateful for that and I'm yeah, yeah. um, happy to see, you know, what you guys have, you know, been right. doing and, and what you're going to do in the future for you and your partner, Jose. Shout out to him as well. Right. And uh, just to kind of piggyback right here, bro, it's just like, you know, going to that those events with you, bro, those boxing events, one thing that, that stood out to me is every time uh, you saw somebody that was well-known in the game, you didn't hesitate to introduce me to them. And also point out that we have our own brand type shit. Like, hey, this is Victor with Marvic Productions. You know that right there. Ring, it's it, it it's gonna stay with people. You know when when you introduce yourself and it's like, oh, Marvic Productions. Like, oh shit. Like, what's that about? Let me look into that. Uh, so I appreciate that, bro. That uh, that definitely goes a long way. And but yeah, man. Um, I, I've got a question on that. I mean, okay. if we can, if we can just go off of that, David. But. Why are you not that it's bad at all? But why are you like that? Have you always been that way? Yeah, like what's I mean, um? I mean, you 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 know you you put us on. Yeah. Again, you didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. We're not paying you. Mm-hmm. You right. know, it's not like you know, hey, bro, here's the money. Please say this on right. the mm-hmm. like we know what it is. But what you know, where did that come from for you? I think just growing up, you know, in in a neighborhood where everybody is so heartwarming and like open arms and. There's nothing I'm going to lose from it. You know what I mean? It right. doesn't cost me anything to, you know, help out or, you know, help, you know, how can I explain it? Like, like open doors. Give a little, like, push to someone that can use the same, like, guidance or help. Mm-hmm. Like, I once used it. You know, they, that's the thing that matters to me, like, making an impact in a positive way in somebody's life. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get further into it. And, you know, that's the goal with, with Mo Boxing. It's, Mo boxing, no problem. It's something that has meaning to it. Like it's not just about the famous, the whole boxing. Like you, like you said, it, it may seem like a scam. Mm-hmm. Like all these boxers, promoters, like they they all just feed off the money that a fight produces. I think it's a little deeper than that. I mean, they all have to start from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for that little push, that little love that somebody showed them, they wouldn't be where they are today. Right. Very true. Right. Who who are some people that helped you, man? I'm curious. Oh like. man, the, the list would be endless. I, I I wouldn't even know where to start. But to be quite honest, just you know, like the gangsters have that bad image on the streets. But growing up, you know, your, some of your brothers or your cousins, your relatives, they're in that life. So they see you and they're like, oh, that's what's his name's cousin. That's what's his name's little brother. You know, let's show him some love. Hey, homie, you want some chips off the you know the right, food right. truck or you want something, you know, we got you, whatever you need. And then the same people that have your back in case, like, something ever pops off, right. they're going to try to protect you and shield you or it's tell you to run home, homie. It's not a good time to be right here on the street, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just little they things like that. You. Yeah. What uh, what what area did you grow up in? Uh, I was born in Santa Ana, mm-hmm. but then my family moved to Costa Mesa to be a little safer because uh-huh. they went through some stuff. You know, they used gotcha. to have a lonchera. Uh-huh. In Santa Ana, and you know how those streets can get. So yeah. anything from, like, 4 p.m. to late at night, it can get pretty hectic. So I heard the stories because I was too young for mm-hmm. Santa Ana. But in Costa Mesa is where I got the more, like, the hands-on feel, like, knowing what it was to be on the block mm-hmm. and not being in such a safe environment. But mm-hmm. I, it's not like I was run trying to run on the streets. It's yeah, like, yeah. so you have projects, like housing projects, mm-hmm. apartments, and then you have liquor stores, like little shopping centers that you see around every other neighborhood. And the spot was the, the arcade, you know, like mm-hmm. the liquor stores always had like little arcades machines. Mm-hmm. And that was the spot. That's where everybody would kick it. And yeah. I, I believe that's where I would kick it a little too much. <laughs> I wasn't really big into the whole school thing. I was always just about like, 
I've being, always just liked socializing, you know, yeah, and since, homies, since day one. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. That's crazy, though, bro, because, you know, like, when I think Costa Mesa, I think nice. I think the beach. I think Huntington Beach as well. Like, Huntington Beach and then it's Costa Mesa, yeah. right? I, I think the Chargers, you know, I think their their facility was okay, in Costa okay. Mesa at one point. So... It's it's crazy to me, you know. Like I'm hearing you talk about Costa Mesa, but I've never seen that side of Costa Mesa. Yeah, I know? mean, it's like everywhere else. Every, like, yeah, every know? city, every has its like you know it's good slums, and bad it's parts. ghetto, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah I guess like, I've only been to the nice side, you know. Right, type shit. right. Yeah. But it's it's a trip, bro. That you that you said that like there's the projects and there's a liquor store. Like I've never seen a liquor store in a nice neighborhood. Oh, they they it shut that exist. down, man. That yeah. that was like as far as like mid two thousands. It, Costa Mesa, that's where it starts getting nice. So, like, that little, uh, what do you call it? That little shopping mall, little shopping center. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, like, a commercial building. Yeah. And it has everything you needed. Like, for the raza, you know, they can you can wash your clothes there. You the can get your hair cut there. So, you they, can, they close that down? Yeah, or? and they just shut it down completely for building homes. Mm, so, they're gen- they, they, they gentrified. They just gentrified us. Yeah, they did us, like, in Boys in the Hood, eh? <laughs> they just... <laughs> kick everyone out yeah They're like you stay in your projects but now you gotta go further down if right, you wanna well, get groceries right right well the dad from boys in the hood said we gotta buy back exactly the block, you know and so we could c- still have control but we're losing man we're yeah. losing you know what i mean mm-hmm. it sucks as as a uh, rasa as a you know what i mean yeah. we're, we're losing we're, we're so still then, losing that so battle. then growing up in that environment you had people that would show you love and and kind of give you some guidance did anybody ever say like hey or, or how did you get involved into like sports itself yeah so basically saying i want to broadcast sports or just i used to be really shy you're not going to believe it Mm -hmm. i used to be the kid that would get stage fright Mm -hmm. i would start panicking and get like teary-eyed if Mm -hmm. someone put me on the spot in a group of people so i guess just with time you know just building that confidence but what what guided you to like hey i want to start a channel or i want to start you know uh posting about sports and just like that. the passion itself and the homeboy you know the my brother the godfather mm-hmm. jose mm-hmm. he used to have a podcast with a group of buddies mm-hmm. and it was more like current events mm-hmm. it was like an internet news type thing uh-huh. so you would like get all the latest stuff that was going on mm-hmm. and then he said they took a break from it or it wasn't going so well and i wish it would have kept going because it had some good stuff and then he told me he's like hey you know what I noticed you're really passionate about boxing. And he's like, let's do this. Mm-hmm. So you, you guys grew up together? No, it's the same way. The same way. Just social media? Just reaching out. Like, hey, guys, I, I like your podcast. I like what you guys do. I was invited as a guest at first to that podcast. Okay. And then when that thing stopped, so how did reached they out to me. find you, though? Like, oh, because were you putting out content for boxing? Sports and Tunes. Yeah, no, Sports and Tunes started off as me just playing my records. So I think they took a liking to my record collection when I was spinning reels and videos mm-hmm. i was posting like my record collection okay. and jose's like hey man this guy has pretty good taste in music mm-hmm. and yeah it, it just stuck as soon as he said let's start this boxing let's see how far we can take it was he into boxing just as much as you were oh yeah he, he yeah. loves it yeah so that, that's why the, the godfather fans. and i yeah we we have some good ass conversations nice nice yeah. so then how, how did uh <clears throat> mo boxing come into place then right there on the spot but he, did you guys have a name right there on the spot or, uh, or did it take some time i i think he was starting it as a test run on his own mm-hmm. so he had already had like the intro mm-hmm. it was a pretty cool intro it's still on YouTube, so if you want to go back and dig in the vault, you can find it as one of our first videos. Dang. And then I came in, second or third interview. He's like, let's get this going, you know. I would like to piggyback and have someone that loves the sport just as much as I do and help me ask the questions. I was like, "That's it's, it's all love, brother. Let's do it. So then I hit up the homeboys, all, everyone that was boxing at the time, mm-hmm. and then my boy Robert, you know, much love, Robert, uh, Leo Santa Cruz's brother. Mm-hmm. And then we started with with their crew. You know, we had all the team at the time. It was Anthony Cuba. Yeah, we had a uh, Zeke Ezekiel Flores. Oh yeah, yeah. he's he still fought fighting. Vargas. Yeah, he yeah. fought Amado, yeah. and the homie. That's the fight that I want to see. Yeah, Chuy Silveira. Mm-hmm. I, he he hung him up. I hope he comes back, but he said he was done. Mm-hmm. Him and just it just kept building momentum. We started. Posting the videos, we started sharing the video, and like you said, reaching out. We started reaching out to more people who would like to be in the interviews. So when was Mo Boxing founded officially? Uh, about two years, two years two and years a half ago. ago. So it's not a long time. So in two years, you guys went from zero followers to 122,000 followers. Yes, sir. 122,000. Without purchasing followers. Nice. Just to so make it organic, clear. Organic. Organic. Natural. Organic. Yes, sir. 
under Dang. twenty two thousand altogether, or just that's just Instagram itself. That's just Instagram itself. Mm -hmm. What about like YouTube? YouTube and your we're other about forty six k, and Facebook is about fifty. Damn. So in two years, like <laughs> Victor said, you went from zero to one hundred twenty thousand. What um, I, I got a couple questions for you. I mean, number number one for anybody that's watching this and they don't know, you know, what mo boxing is. How would you describe it? What what is mo boxing? No problem. Mo boxing, no problem is a community. It's something more than just internet news. It's a community. It's where you go to get your latest unboxing is where you can go and express how you feel on a comment or, you know, just share something with about us. About a fight. <laughs> yeah, we, we make groups, and then anybody's welcome to post whatever they like. They can post their experiences, their training, you know, promote themselves. And what, what makes you guys, um, how do you guys differentiate yourself from other, you know, boxing pages? Like, what makes you guys special? In, in other words, what? How would you say? I think it would just be the whole mindset, the whole bigger picture that we see in boxing and not just caring about the whole spectacle of, you know, being viral or wanting money out of it. Mm -hmm. It's more of a giving back or helping others, paving the way. How do you guys help back exactly? So it's more like, a, I'd like to say, it, call it more like a, how do you call it? not Robin Hood because we're not robbing anyone, but mm -hmm. more like whatever we can do as far as like out of pocket. Mm hmm we can sponsor a boxer or we can sponsor a young kid that needs help, like with a pair of shoes or, you know, boxing gloves mm -hmm. or travel costs to their Golden Glove tournament fights, yeah. stuff like free. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, it's not just about sponsoring. So it's really, it, it's fighters. what I'm getting, it's like a, it's a community that support each other to continue the dream of becoming a boxer. Yes, sir. You know, if there's any way you guys can help a youngster that maybe has a lot of talent, but the, can't afford the travel costs to go to the Golden Gloves. You guys are there to support and and sponsor that, right? For them. And that's and that's what I'm saying. There's bigger plans. We'd like to, mm -hmm. in time, you know, get everything done correctly. We'd like to start off with like a, a foundation or a nonprofit for, for nice. the, precisely for the same reason. If mm -hmm. we're already doing that out of pocket, why not have people come in and help out? Damn. Did you? Um, I'm assuming you boxed yourself growing well, up. I used to. Train at a spot called Soy in Costa Mesa, which is called Save Our Youth. Save it's our like youth. a place of refuge for kids to keep them off the streets. I like mm -hmm. that name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Save Our keep Youth. Them out the and they're still out and there, you know. Everyone, you know, if you want to, if you're in Costa Mesa, go visit Save Our Youth. Uh -huh. And they just keep kids out of trouble. I remember they used to take us on field trips in the summertime. They used to take us to the La Brea Tar Pits, mm -hmm. to, and then to kind of yeah, tournaments and stuff. Yeah, it's a really good program. Just to learn, and th and that's the other kind of places that have motivated us to, you know try to take it to that level yeah so. so that's really cool like you're not just a page where you know you can go on and, and see news. the upcoming fights and cool interviews but behind the scenes you guys are actually involved with your community like people know who you guys are and you know what kind of help that you bring how do you decide uh who to help like let's say more and i'm coming more from an angle of like i'm trying to make a comeback that's why Man, we got you. Uh, no, just don't don't invest. We got in you, man. Business. Hey, there's, there's a bunch of misfits, you know, yeah. uh, influencer leagues. Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure you guys can jump in there. Uh, right. I'm I'm gonna stay out of that one respectfully. But in a shadow box in a little. How bit. do you yeah. um? How do you and Jose like determine you know who to help? Like, we how just do you ask each other if if, the, if it fits if it's and we're both feeling it. If it aligns with more and boxing, we really trust each other's judgment. So mm -hmm. we we get the best out of us, and you know if, if we can do it, we'll do it. That's dope. On that note, brother, um, you know, you say you trust Jose, mm -hmm. right? You guys are not related. That's not like your actual brother. I know you call him the Godfather, mm -hmm. but it, it it almost you make it sound like you guys are brothers. They're yeah. kind of like me and Victor. Like we actually people think we look like each yeah. other. Yeah. So we have that relationship, like how he took in uh, Tom as a conciliary. So I'm like basically got you. Yeah, I'm more of a CEO, yeah. and he's more like behind the scenes. That like, was a Godfather reference, right yeah. there. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Um, how, so how do you um like on that note right there? You know, we were talking off camera just about some things that Mo Boxing is going through, and like you know, kind of cleaning up and mm -hmm. sharpening yourselves. But how do you, you know, what kind of advice would you give? someone out there that wants to start maybe you know a page like yours yeah or maybe, or maybe not even something related to boxing yeah any, any business, page any. podcast 
social group. How do you go about choosing yeah. your business so, partner? I'd say give it time. You know, mm -hmm. get a feel for that person before you just show too much generosity and love. Because you don't know. Sometimes they try to do stuff behind your back. Try mm -hmm. to feel entitled after being involved with you guys for so long. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, yeah, we've had to let go of certain people for doing the it's same thing. It's happened to you guys? Yeah. yeah. And like I said, the only thing you can do is learn from it and improve. Yeah. How, do, how do you and Jose, like being uh, co-owners, how do you guys, and I'm, I'm not asking for specific examples, mm -hmm. but I, I am asking for some transparency here in the sense of like, you know, because people will probably look at me and Victor and be like, oh, they probably never get into fights. They probably never right. disagree on anything. They, mm -hmm. they think like, you know, like we're, we said earlier, like he starts a sentence, I finish it. Oh, everything is beautiful in chemistry. Hell no. It's not <laughs> yeah. like we just things I want to do, this things he doesn't want to do. Absolutely. I'm sure you and Jose are the same way, you know. Mm -hmm. How do you... um? You know, how do you guys deal with that? How do you guys go about that with, you know, two and a half years of a partnership that is flourishing? I mean, mm -hmm. 120,000 files. You guys are obviously doing something, something right. right. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? How do you guys stay in sync and we'll kind of keep that respect for each other? Keeping it 100, you know, just being real transparent, like you say, and respecting each other's decisions. You know, he has something to say. I have something to say. We hear each other out. We don't just rush into conclusions. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in some cases... Certain people that are trying to cause a toxic environment within the group mm -hmm. are the people that have to be let go. Like it, it takes time for someone to show their true colors, and when it's not just people out in your circle, but outside your circle, and then further out of your circle that are letting you know, hey, you know what, this, this, and this is going on, you just reach a boiling point where it's like, hey, you know what, you have to make a decision. Big, we already had had a, a sit down or like a, a video call. And intervention <laughs> yeah we tried to make it work yeah. and when something is just not vibing anymore it's just better to just make that tough decision yeah. both separate ways Absolutely. right right i mean i think it's, it's it's the healthiest decision you can make or else in the long run yeah. what, what what's going to be of mo boxing you know mm -hmm. there may be no mo boxing there'll be no more problems and no boxing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right, know what right, I mean? right 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 that's right. funny um, that's a good one I, I got, I got. That's how I know got, you used um, to rap, bro. <laughs> I love rap. I love hip hop. Yeah, hey, can yeah. you can you freestyle? No, man. I wish I, I could I find a little instrumental. Yeah, I, I wish I, I could. Feel like you got some verses in you, bro. I mean, right now. I, <laughs> no, no, man. I, I wish I could. Sure? the best beast, beast boxing. Uh, <laughs> nah. Need another old fashioned. Maybe uh, yeah. we'll start getting inspired. It, well, I <laughs> might. No, but I, I actually am really big into hip hop and and real hip hop and rap. And yeah, there's there's more. Projects that I'd like to get into in the future, yeah. you guys motivate me because you guys don't just network and interview athletes. Uh -huh. You guys outside musicians, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Like, that's yeah. the whole concept of sports and tunes. But since this episode is mo boxing, we'll keep it mo boxing. Gotcha. Oh, we, you know, we could do a little sports and tunes <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. What What are some of on the music side? I mean, I didn't know that that so you know you were putting out records and that and Jose liked your taste. Oh yeah, music. man. Uh, yeah, so that that actually within itself, it's just a real. motivation. So yeah, through soy itself. So soy has been a product of motivating a group that started off as like a tagging crew. Like they were artists, they were good at, at tagging what they did. And then in the future they turned into uh well, they have a really big crew. It's uh, the funk freaks. The funk freaks. So if you guys tune in on YouTube or listen to their music on Spotify, th those guys are the ones that are pioneering like street funk. You know how like funk like you think of George Clinton or you know big names like that, like the Gap Band, the Barcase. I have no idea. I'm okay, so yeah. Gap Band so so you I hear like yet. funk, like old school funk. Mm -hmm. These guys are like bringing it back with like that street vibe, like that that cholo vibe, but okay. not too cholo. Like it's okay. just street like funk. You know, it's like it, everyone like that, that says to my mind right now is insane in the membrane. Yeah, it's it's a little brain. funky. Yeah, it's, it's still <laughs> hip hop or rap, yeah. but but like more funk. Like how can I explain it? More like something like... Like Funky Town? No, like, I don't know if you've heard Rumors, Timex Social Club, sing so, it, something more like that. Nah. Look at all these rumors surrounding me every day. Nah, I, I just know. need some time, some time to get away hey. from from all these rumors. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Bryce, put that uh. shit on. Right there. <laughs> Find the yeah, video. no, so it's, it's stuff like that that's uh -huh. just so fascinating to me. I love how someone was able to make music and turn it into a record, and the very first record was actually a piece of paper. You know what I mean? It's like a piece of paper, and then they tuned it, and they made sound out of it. That's crazy. I didn't know that. 
That's, yeah. That's, well, I, 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 I like to get deep into stuff, you know what I mean? I don't get that. When, when it comes to movies. To so it was like a round piece of paper. Like, how can I explain it? Like, like a disc, like a CD. Uh-huh. You know, a CD, yeah, yeah, they yeah. press music into like a laser form and it, it spins and that's how you get oh, your okay, music. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. So the record, the vinyl record, it goes by RPMs, which is like, I think it's a rhythms per minute or mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, rate per minute or, or whatever. But it's what makes the needle produce a sound off cables. And mm-hmm. that's how you get sound from a vinyl record. Shout you are you like a DJ? Can you DJ? I I was I doing it. I was I was scratching right. when I was doing it just for fun at home. But like that, you can say I'm like a DJ premiere or like a like those. Uh, uh, what do you call them? I call no them computer. Box, no I call problem. them computer DJs. The ones DJ that you see nowadays that are so big. Yeah, yeah. Like the electro DJs. Yeah, like those guys. They're cool, but like real. If you the to be able to master a, a real set of turntables with original vinyl playing, it's not a skill. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Getting sound from one side to another. Right on beat, yeah. That's called Shit. perfection and whatnot that's of dope, an bro. art form. That's the that's the true art of uh, hip hop and music and all that. I, yeah. And those, I I got to get more into that to learn more of that. I yeah. Feel like there's a lot that goes into music. Mm-hmm. Like you hear the sound engineer, you hear the 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 singer, and how they combine it all together. That's right. what the true art of um, music becomes. Who, who's some of your favorite artists right now? I know you said I, I know the real one. hip-hop, yeah. which I'm sure you probably don't like a lot of the yeah, mainstream. Yeah, I, I get a lot of, like, bad... Um, Let me guess, Drake. You love Drake. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. And more the technique. Yeah, so I, I actually, hey. it's funny, because I'm going to have an Easter egg. Uh-huh. Well, a dude that I know that trains at Leo's gym, uh-huh. he doesn't like me to bring it up, but I'm going to show him his love. This guy actually has a verse with Immortal Technique. Mm. I think you mentioned this to us. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam, yeah, he's a really good. Uh, he's a, actually a fighter. He's a pro fighting uh, photographer. Okay. So he's actually ringside at big fights and he's like uh-huh. getting pictures. Oh, uh, dope. But he's actually pretty dope. I, I told him you should have just he did kept a song going. with Immortal? He did a verse on that song, Peruvian Cocaine. Okay, oh, I got to yeah. check that out. Check All that I know and, is and that's with hot, the devil. bro. That, mm-hmm. That's real, real, like raw talent. Like uh-huh. being able to put. Where's Immortal good from? Grammar. Is he in New York, right? New York? No, no, like Latino. He, oh, I, I think it's I think it's um, Venezuela. So, oh, somewhere South in South America. America okay. you know, no disrespect. I just, I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, it was one yeah. of those countries. Yeah, no, that, what is it, Dancing with the Devil? That's yeah, the best. Hey, you guys are going to trip out on this, but go into his following and check out who he follows. Sports Mo tunes? Mo Boxing, no Mo problem. Boxing, no problem, baby. Hey. Bro, I noticed Conor McGregor follows you guys. Yeah. Too. yeah. I, come up? I, I wish I knew how, and I wish she can come and talk to us, but yeah. that's Connor. amazing. Bro, he follows you guys. Though. Yeah. That, that's crazy. The I notorious? saw that. The notorious Conor McGregor follows mm-hmm. Mo Boxing, no that's, problem. That's my dude, man. That's yeah. big. That's big, bro. I yeah. used to watch Conor at church. While no the way. pastor was preaching, <laughs> come on, Lord. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, it's you guys got crazy. a you guys got a really good following, man, and a lot of big names there, which obviously ultimately means you guys are doing something great. And also, I know there's fighters that are from different countries, man, and uh, you know you guys show love to them, and I know that means yeah. a lot to them as well. Where it's like, damn, like my name is being put on this guy's page here, mm-hmm. and you know they got a huge following. And obviously, we you know we have a fighter that's going to be fighting October 26th. In Texas, uh, you know, he's from Mexico, Sonora, Mm -hmm. and you guys, you know, gave him the time to come on the platform and, you know, interview him and and tell his story. So, you know, we we definitely appreciate that as well. Yeah, I was actually trying to get us out to Hermosillo, but I think it's already past the deadline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this weekend, right? I think so. Yeah, it's yeah. last minute. I think it, the cutoff was last Friday. Yeah. Um, bro, uh, I wanted to ask you this, man, but obviously I saw a video, uh, you know, Canelo's fight this. Uh, he's fighting this Saturday. Yeah, but there was a video of you in behind the scenes with him having a conversation. Yeah. How, how did that come about, bro? And what was, what did it feel to be in the room with, with, with the king? Big with with the king of boxing, bro. Oh, well, you know. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was pretty cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to He's say the least. About it. Yeah, to say the least, it was a very cool experience. I'm not going to lie. So I was just doing my thing, you know. So I just started there uh, walking down. They're going, getting ready to do the press conference. Mm-hmm. And they're coming down. And I see everybody trying to rush Edgar Berlanga because mm-hmm. he came down first. Yeah. And then those same people that were with Edgar Berlanga, no disrespect to Edgar Berlanga, Wish you the best. Good luck. All those people, as soon as they saw Canelo, everybody started rushing Canelo. Uh-huh. He's a bigger star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then uh, I seen Eddie, and I've met Eddie at one of those Marv Nation right, shows. Right. You know, I remember you, being there me. one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he used to train. Uh, I think he just fought Nathan Rodriguez. Nathan Morenito, you know. Morenito, yeah, Morenito yeah. just won last Friday. Right, yeah. right. I remember being there, and yeah. I met Eddie. 
I met Eddie there, and then trip out. I ended up running into him at a baseball game in Arizona. There you go. Yeah, and nobody had recognized him, bro. Yeah. Like we we're walking. It was me and my brother, and I just looked to my right, and I saw what, what Chapo, Chepo, Chepo Reynoso. Che, Chepo, I saw his dad. His dad. Right? Yeah. I was like, that's him. And then I looked right, and I was like, shit, that's as Eddie. Mm-hmm. We were there to go watch the Oscar Valdez fight against San Navarrete. I was there. Yeah, I, I was there too. So. What's it called? I fucking hey, saw Eddie. How was he there? And you didn't be like, hey, homie, where you at? You know? You didn't tell me you were there, bro. Oh, man. I, I was, call, yeah, call him out, David. Yeah, right man, now, bro, let's settle We, we right could have even gone in on the, on the flight together. Oh, we, you know? Yeah, yeah, Where'd you go? LAX I, or Ontario? I drove. I drove. Oh, you drove? I drove I, for I, that one. I got hooked up, you know, you know, That's shout so, out to my brother. But, but yeah, I saw Eddie and I was like, yo, Eddie, let me get a picture. And he, you know, I was like, hey, do you remember like we just met like two weeks ago at the Nathan Rodriguez uh, Marv Nation event? And he was like, yeah, see, see, see. You know, I doubt he remembers, but he's like, see, see. He just wanted to get the picture over with so nobody would recognize right. him. Once I took that picture, bro, he got swamped. He got flooded. Yeah, right away, everybody started stop, stopping and recognizing that's how, him. That's how they do it. But I was telling him that that was Friday. The fight was Saturday. So I told Eddie, I'm like, hey, y'all, I'm going to be at the fight tomorrow, man. Best of luck. You know, and unfortunately. They it, didn't go to the fight. Didn't go. It, no, uh, the fight didn't play the way I wanted to. But yeah. they were not going to be at the fight. They were no, just they at were the there. baseball? No, no, they, they were at the fight. They was, uh, Reynoso was the trainer of Oscar Valdez. Oh, no, no, my bad. I didn't go to that one. I, I yeah. was confused. Yeah, Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, my bad. On, I take it back. Yeah, I was at, I thought you were talking about the one, uh, the recent one that I went to was Bam Rodriguez oh. and Gallo Estrada. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one was a good fight too. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, my bad. There. Yeah, I, I yeah, take yeah. that back. So, go. yeah, so going back to the story, I was, you know, recording Edgar Berlanga and then I, I was like, oh, shoot, it's time. Because uh-huh. that whole night before, I was like, man. Eddie was super cool, but I don't know, did he really remember me? Because I was telling him, like, hey, bro, you know, you forgot all about the people. And I'm, it's right here. Uh-huh. You forgot about the people from Tepic Nayarit. What's uh-huh. up? Uh-huh. And he's like, nah, nah. That, 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 this is the conversation from the Marm Nation fight uh-huh. when we saw him. He's like, ya te olvidaste de nosotros, Eddie. ¿Qué pasó? You know, la colonia de la tierra de libertad. That, that's what it's called, the a little colony where, all the, where my family's from. And they basically used to rent a house to train. They would do their camp. Right across the street from my aunt's house uh-huh. and, like, my grandma's house to the right. Like, my family all live, like, that little street. Mm-hmm. And my aunt had the house right across. So then that's what got me in because I was like, hey, Eddie, you know, show love, man. When are you going to come back to visit the uh-huh. peak? You know, it's it's the stomping grounds. That's where you guys started. Uh-huh. He's like, ah, you know, one day we'll, we'll go. And then I was like, hey, hay chance de conocer a Saul o entrevistarlo pronto. Like, voy a hablar con él. And that was that one time, you know. Uh-huh. So then I was like, hey, Eddie. Mira, ¿se acuerda? Uh-huh. La colonia. So this is when you saw him yeah. at, the, at the press conference. And, and I'm going to get to the main thing. So uh-huh. then he's like, hey, güero, está el, el primo del puerquillo que quiere la revancha. Like he was joking around. Uh-huh. Like saying, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. He's setting you up for failure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was basically like reminding him because that's the, the little video. I don't know if you guys seen it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty big. And he's telling me how... Canelo was just hitting the speed bag or he was like training jump roping or something in front of the house and there's gates like in every house in Mexico there's like a little gate to get to the street and my cousin was like the neighborhood Debo he was like the bully Uh he would just try to punk everybody you know (laughs) and he sees Canelo he's training and he goes in he's like making a scene hitting the gate and then Eddie uh, comes out and he's like Hey, I want to get down with my primo Puerco. Uh, Humberto's his name, but they call him Puerco Porquillo. So Canelo said, I want to get down. No, with, my uh, cousin Eddie. told Eddie, oh. hey, I want to get down with one of your fighters. And oh. Eddie's like, all right, hold on. Who do you want? Uh-huh. And he's like, I want the small one. That one. <laughs> he's the one that he saw training. Oh, Saul. Yeah, yeah, and he, he set himself up for failure. My uh-huh. cousin was like 19, like a bully. Uh-huh. Canelo was like 14. Dude. He was oh, like, those like his starting years uh-huh. as a pro. So yeah, he turned pro at 15, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so then they put on the gloves and... You know, Fuck. Canelo yeah. put that work in, and that's the video. That's when Eddie told Canelo, "Hey, this guy wants the like a joke. <laughs> like he wants the rematch." He's like, "Oh yeah, man. I wish it would have been sooner because that's what it was prior for him having to go into the press conference. Uh-huh. So we didn't get enough time. It was yeah, like a, a 30, 30, 40 seconds, you know. Uh-huh. And still I, cool though. It, it was. Yeah. I wish it could have turned into something bigger, but it's right. cool, you know. I mean. You know, hey, bro, you'll, get, you'll get another chance. I hope so. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's gonna remember you, bro. And yeah. I, uh, that seems like Portillo. such a such a genuine, yeah. uh, you know, like 
a flashback for him too. To and they were just cracking up because right. they're like, this fool is like the neighborhood depot. You know, he was always punking everybody, taking their lunch money. Well, and Canelo said something, right? He said, oh, he picked me because I was the smallest. Yeah, and guy. not knowing that I was the, the biggest. Cabron, you know, yeah. the most cabron. Yeah. Big cinnamon. And then, yeah, so I, I messed up a little bit because then my aunt used to sell food across and that's where he would go like munch out. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like low key. Like, you know, he's trying to be fit, but he's eating I think it was pozole. I think it, it was. Uh, <laughs> you had to get that. Good yeah, food. yeah, it was pozole, and, and there was something else. My aunt was telling me she's like, "Hijo, no, no era pozole." <laughs> she like, she called me out. Uh-huh. She's like, "He likes sopes. Oh, you know what yeah, sopes are? Yeah, 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 yeah. fire. King yeah. Taco. Shout yeah, out to yeah, King Taco. King Taco. You know, you'll catch, you'll get catch me on third and fourth. King Taco. Let's you'll do it. catch me on third and fourth at one in the morning eating a burrito or something. Look it up. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she's like, "You messed up." I was like, "Hey, I got it. I asked him." And I was like, don't forget about my aunt. You know, she used to hook you up. And like, nah, nah, nah. She never gave it to me. Yeah. Like, but yeah. Yeah, so. I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, he but then, he got. And then, you know, the guy is like, okay, we got to get started. Let's yeah. go. So that's what's up, that was though, cool. man. I mean, for you to even just. Hey, and not only that, I was able to get. Uh, if they start doing the press conference, right? And then all that spectacle that you guys saw him and mm-hmm. Verlanga going at it. Mm-hmm. So then they take them out for like the broadcasting interviews, mm-hmm. which is like with the bigger channels, with like Violin, the radio yeah. host. Other, and other NBC, news, yeah. like like little news Main channels, stream. yeah. And the guy that works, I think he works for PBC or someone. He saw me because I was like, and then the one of the security is like, "Who are you?" And I was like, "Trust me, I, I you know, I was just with uh, Canelo and Eddie." Mm-hmm. And the guy is like, "No." And then he signals the other guy, and the other guy's like, "To let me out." Uh-huh. So then I go to the outside. That's where they do like the, the broadcasting interviews. Uh-huh. And then if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have gotten this. What'd you get? I got Canelo and I got Eddie. Eddie knows the signature. Damn. Damn. Hey, bro, that, that hat's worth money already. Yeah, so that, that's what it was. And then I was hoping to get a few more minutes, but then that's when they were doing, like, the last interviews hey, even, with, even with though media like quick, us. Even though though, yeah. that's a moment. That's a special, right, right. funny Dude, moment that, that, that only you could have had. With if you right. want, want to get some good stuff, go to Canelo's press conferences. Uh, Teofimo Lopez was out there. Right. And then, but, but just going back, though, just the conversation that you had with Canelo, bro, it, it's a it's a very genuine conversation. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not, like I, I, it's not like I was asking him for anything. It was right. just, a, you know. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like if, let's just right. say, we were there, bro. We we wouldn't be able to have that moment because we don't got no history like that. You know, most like people this, go up. Hey, can I get a picture? Can you yeah. sign this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You actually could go and there's flashbacks history. there from his childhood. You know that that was a moment his in his first childhood. Days, yeah, and they still remember so your cousin, bro. El Puerquillo. Yeah, man. they still remember him, Puerquillo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the neighborhood bully. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious, dog. But man, dog, I mean, uh, just to be there and and to be able to have a conversation with him, I'm sure, bro, it's it's gonna be in the memory books. Yeah. What do, What do your kids say about that? Man, I, I know it, you got the how, kids, how many boys you got, bro? I got four boys at home. Man. Four like, boys? Yeah, how many girls yeah, yeah, you got? You know, one girl, but from an ex relationship. But she visits five us. Kids? Yeah. Yeah. My boy. All together when, when we all get work. together. Inside and outside. My yeah, boy said so, I was in the ring. Mm. Yeah, so the kids they were really happy, but like yeah. my wife, she couldn't believe it because I was like, watch. I'm going to send you a video and it's going to be me and kind of, she's like, you wish in your dreams. Damn. Yeah. And, wrong. and not only that. shorty or? No, 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 no. My wife, my wife. Your wife. Yeah. Your yeah. Wife. I don't have no shorty. Uh-huh. I was going to say, was yeah. this your, your ex? No, 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 no. no. Hating. Yeah. Oh, no <laughs> right. Hey, let's get that right. Yeah, yeah. No, wife. I only have a wife. No, uh-huh. no shorties. Uh-huh. So then she, uh, she was like, yeah, right. You're not going to get anything. Uh-huh. And then boom, there it was. I just sent her the, the video. The napalm bomb. Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn. And she's like, damn, that's really nice. Not only that, she was about to get mad at me. She's like, you're already sending everyone da 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 da. And I was like, hang tight. I go, I run into Canelo's wife. Uh-huh. I was like, oye, me haces un gran favor. Me puedes mandar un saludo a mi esposa. Uh-huh. Boom, on the spot. Damn. She sent her a shout out video. That's nice. what's up. Gracias. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Fernanda. Fernanda, gracias, Fernanda. Fernanda. Yeah. yeah. Your, your wife is uh, just Claudia. As, Claudia is my wife. Is name. Claudia just as uh, into boxing as you? Or? She actually had her debut with Mo Boxing. She came out and she recorded, and she oh. was actually able to meet Ryan Garcia's parents. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. This is the last event, and right? Marv Nation. Yeah. Hey, and I wish you guys would have came with me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll see what's <laughs> up. Is, is there any fights this? Uh, oh, I think I think the next ones are yeah. So Canelo is this weekend. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, I let really me ask you about best, that, bro. Well, what do you think about this fight with, with Berlanga? What, what's your take on it? I really hope it goes as far as they're saying it goes uh-huh. because you know we don't like those Mike Tyson fights where we love Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson would just end fights too soon. Mm-hmm. We just really hope we get a good action. No, I mean I think 
Canelo is a is a smart businessman where he's not gonna end the fight. Just like right. Floyd Mayweather, you know, Floyd obviously he had hands issues, but when it comes to like Conor McGregor when he fought McGregor, yeah, he could have ended that in the fifth round if he wanted to. Or Just even putting earlier. on a show, yeah, yeah, but he knows he has to put on a show for the fans because yeah. people are paying big Make money it to last be there. Longer. Yeah, yeah, so you kind of have to let it extend hey, a bit. You guys also want to trip out on something else? So that same week, mm-hmm. that's what tripped people out the most. And you guys are going to trip out on this, too. I don't know if I told you, but that same weekend, that same week, it was the Canelo press conference, and then Saturday, guess who I ran into? And you just spoke about it. Uh, Mike Tyson? You, you just said it, about putting on his show. Oh, Floyd Mayweather. Well, Mayweather. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, he had like a fundraiser was, out here, Yeah, right? man. Everyone that came yeah. out, that shit was cool. You know, That's it was... Uh, he was uh, doing a I meeting. I saw you met the kid too bottles. from uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, Miguel. man. That's they even shout out Miguel. funnier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sholo. That's his, Sholo. That's his real name. That's his real name? Sholo. X O L O. Sholo. Hey, yeah. I'm waiting for that, for that, the, the other episodes of Cobra Kai. Bro. Yeah, it's coming up, man. Yeah. The new season. Yeah, like so he show. was really cool. Show. And then I ran into Annie. She's going to portray Jenny Rivera coming up. I don't know if it's a movie or uh-huh. a series. Okay. And I met her. She was really sweet. Dope, dope. She trains boxing, man. That's crazy. Shout out to David, the pro boxer or pro boxing trainer. Mm, he gotcha. he trains her out here in LA. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really hope we can, you know, I don't want to get any spoilers, but I mean, if we can get a good little thing going, uh-huh. we can start a project, you know, maybe get is. some Marvig going on in a movie and some mo boxing all in the same place. Hey, bro, you're thinking yeah, big. I'm, like I'm an did. actor, bro. All I'm saying hey, is huh? you know? give me a script and. I'm a visionary. I can just Don't get me going. write something up and we'll go from there. Look, you be the DJ. You control the music. Give me a couple <laughs> words to say. You guys are going to be the live commentary if there's a fight, in, a fight shit, scene. I think, I think Marlon will be good at that, bro. He has some pretty good reactions. Like, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, my God. He'll be God. like Joe Rogan right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Canelo. All right, but threw a left. G- give me a round about Canelo, bro. What round? Do you believe Canelo wins by knockout? How if, much money should we if bet he's, on this, David? If he's really trying David, to How put, much money should we bet? Uh, on what you got, but Canelo, no, hell no. Canelo's probably your safest bet. Mm-hmm. But if you're like a risk taker, well, look, I'm gonna be no, honest no, right no. now. Fuck taking risks. In Vegas, you're <laughs> not gonna money. make any money with, with Canelo because he's probably such a go with the over under. I I put down bets on uh, rounds. Rounds. So I I definitely put a bet on round eight. I probably see it going further than this. Like so I, half, I, half I put an eight because Canelo said eight. More past the sixth um, round. And I, I noticed Canelo does tend to, you know, break down his opponents by the eighth. Mm-hmm. He starts to pick it up. I put a bet on eight round. I put an, a bet on the tenth round. And I believe I even put a bet on the sixth round. I mean, if he's really trying to put on a show, but if he's really trying to make a statement like what he was showing at the press conference. I hope he does. He probably can go under six rounds. Da, da, I hope he da, does. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I hope he makes a statement, bro. Because obviously, look, I, I was telling one of my boys, I like I like that Berlanga is talking, you know, because a lot of fighters do give Canelo that respect, and they kind of lose the fight before going in. So this kid is he's talking his shit, bro, and and he and he seeming he seems very confident going in there. Is um, that New like York in him? Yes, it's that New York. I mean, he said it like a million times. I'm from New York. I'm from New, New York. York. I'm like, damn, and dog. And he's proud of his roots being right. Puerto Rico doing the, the rivalry, you know? Right, right. So he's selling the fight in that sense, you know? But um, I feel like it reminds me of, uh, do you remember when, when um, he just fought to uh, Cepeda? Chon Cepeda, yeah. Chon when Cepeda that dude was bothering Oswego him, trying to Rogers. take the belts yeah. from him on the press conference. You saw how that ended in the first yeah. round. Hey, shout out to Chon Cepeda. Yeah. I was just hanging out with him. He just won, too. Yeah. I saw that. Hey, arriba la diablista. That, yeah. That's like the word his brother uses. Yeah. So, so that's And his how, brother, uh-huh. fun fact, he kicked the other trainer because they were like going back and forth. So his brother threw a little kick. They, they, yeah. they almost got down in the but yeah, press like, conference. Chon Cepeda. Is, but that's, yeah. th- that's what this fight, I feel, is going to play out. Mm-hmm. You know, like it just... Some, some, some. Every time you do a lot of talking, it just doesn't go your way. So it could go shorter than six rounds. That's what I'm saying. Is if you're a risk taker, I probably take the under. Maybe you get better props. Mm-hmm. But what what are you playing? Safe bet on? is probably over. I don't. I wouldn't even bet on the fighter because no. it's just probably doing the over under. Yeah, I think it has more better props. Well, I'll let, I'll let you look at my thing, and you could place a bet for me <laughs> on the under or over. Definitely. But, yeah, man, I mean, we got some good fights coming up, bro. Any uh, other events that you're going to go to or plan on going to? Uh, we were trying to hit up this weekend, you know, but, you know, for whatever reason, uh, not trying to put you guys on the spot, but Magna Media, I think you guys are really sleeping on us. Yeah. We apply to every single one of your events. We show love to a lot of promoters. Mm-hmm. And, like everybody says, we show mad love to the boxing community. Why not? You know, even consider us for at least one of your 
fights. That's interesting, bro. Let's What's their name? Yeah. What's Magna name? Media? Magna is... Media. What's up with that? Magna Media. We're gonna right. tag you in this video. Yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of great uh, people here that are willing to go to your event and put great content if you just approve them. So I need you guys to review that. Yeah, and PBC, and PBC. You know, uh, TG P Promotions are the promoter that broadcasts with PBC Premier Boxing Champions. Mm -hmm. So I believe they're together. But since they don't like to deal with all that mess, they just pass over their credentials or their mm -hmm. media mm -hmm. to Magna Media, and they're the ones that do all the big events. So if gotcha. it's like the August 3rd, like the Terrence Crawford, mm -hmm. it was for through Magna Media. Gotcha. All the big fights get sent over to Magna Media. Gotcha. I got a question for you, brother. Um, I mean, we're talking a lot about, you know, the upcoming fights, what we love about boxing, all this stuff. If you could, man, because I know you got a lot of love and appreciation and respect for the sport, but what are what are some things right now that maybe you don't like right now in the sport of boxing? That if you could change or, you know, like, what would you like to see differently? If anything, and maybe there is, and maybe this sport is perfect, I don't know. I'd like to see people put as much emphasis on the new blood a new generation mm. and show more love to small promoters who are doing the smaller venues because at the end of the day, I get it. They have to work their way up mm -hmm. to get a land, a good fight on a good big card. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for those guys, how would they get there? Right. So, and not just in the States, you know, we can go like Mexico, you know, so you don't think there's enough other countries. eyes on, you know, upcoming right. people. Yeah. So you guys, Sorry, not you guys, but, you know, as a whole society, like, in the world in general, you guys give a lot of attention. And like I said, not personal. Just yeah, you know, you're saying in the general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are making people get famous, letting them go viral, TikTokers. And there's nothing against it, you know, get your money, you know, whatever. But you're just giving too much attention to things that are not really as important. Like, you know you, what I'm talking about. You see some annoying mm -hmm. things that are, like, Okay, why does that have to be so viral? Right. But then you're letting other people that are, like, struggling and are truly trying to make it out there, no emphasis, no no love whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about just boxing? Just, no, anyone. Just like, generally? Any spotlight. Like, it, like you it. have yeah. a lot of talent. You have singers. I've seen videos of, like, kids it, it that kinda, have good talent. It, it kind of goes back to what, what I what I said in a comment. That's what that's what it reminds me, where somebody put a puro chisme venden or some shit mm. like that. And I was like, pues, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's lo que se vende. Yeah, you I know, think the algorithms are just bad. Right, and I, I, I get what you're saying, bro, where it's like we're, we're putting so much attention on, we're spotlighting negativity pretty much, and it's not something that's producing mm -hmm. good fruits, but yet we're, 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 we're giving them the spotlight mm -hmm. when you got somebody that's doing the work and putting in the effort, and there's like no spotlight there. Exactly, it's like, and we're not going to go very far. So you know how everyone in the States is the number one market for the Mexican national team. And I'm not trying to shit on the Mexican national team. Mm -hmm. I just wish they can just, you know, step it up mm -hmm. and actually care about representing uh, you your country, mm -hmm. you know. But you see how empty stadium on Saturday. Yeah. Canelo was there, empty stadium. What's going on? Are people finally starting to realize that they're just idolizing too much and not really caring about... Re uh, good representatives of your country. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, y'all been playing like shit. So, who are um, who are some people, some up and coming fighters that you would like to shed more light on? You know, oh, as you're saying this right now, like it, it's there's so many. So right now, there's this kid from Canada. His name's Joseph Brown. He's part of the money team. Joseph Brown. Yeah. So he's like one of the youngest dudes that was saying. Uh, you guys seen him, mm -hmm. Carmel Moulton. That mm -hmm. feels bad. He's like just him. knocking everyone out mm -hmm. and like ending fights quick. He's Looks like a like combination it. of Tank Davis, a combination of freaking Floyd Mayweather, a combination yeah. of. Looks like a 12 year old still, but he's, he's a got beast. That power. He's fast. Yeah. He's, he's powerful, yeah. And like Mexico too, they're producing a lot of young talent. There's this kid, Arturo Cárdenas. Mm -hmm. He just recently fought. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, we did a real. He, he trains with Christian. Robert Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That kid is yeah. good. Mm -hmm. He just fought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, El Americano, I'm sure you guys know him, Joshua Garcia, El Americano. He's uh, with Golden Boy now. He's, nah, I don't really know. He's solid. And then there's uh, there's just a bunch. In Mexico itself, there was this kid I was following years ago. I haven't really checked up on him, but they call him La Bestia, Lucero. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like he, that nickname. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll name one, bro. Raul Curiel. Curiel, no, he's super underrated. El Cougar. He El Cougar. he's been at it, you know. He was supposed to compete he's in the ranked Olympics. Ranked number ten in the whole world oh, yeah. right now hey, with the WBC. Curiel, but yeah, salute, champ. There's no there's no title fight, so what's up with that? We got to call out the WBC. And he's in a good division. The welterweight yeah. division is that, and, and and it's up for grabs right now since freaking Crawford vacated, vacated the belt. Yeah. So how can you be Virgil, ranked number ten? Had to step up too. Yeah. So uh, that, that's somebody that I would like to see fight for a title soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Curiel. And then Gio's underrated. He had a good performance with Cepeda. I mean, and it didn't go his way, but, you know, we just still, mm-hmm. he was able to compete toe-to-toe with El Pitbull. Mm-hmm. And, well, we don't know what's going on with El Pitbull. He just lost to Rayo. Mm-hmm. But I think that our GPA training and Robert Garcia, salute. Mm-hmm. I've been out there, man, and these guys hustle, man. These guys, yeah, no, every they, fighter they, that steps into our GBA, they got grit, you have bro. business there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so funny, bro. There's this kid. He's fighting Saturday against Roly Manuel uh, Jaimes. Yeah. Jaimes. Hey, shout out, shout out to Toscano Boxing. They're the promoter. Yeah. That, so, uh, so he said today in an interview that he's been training with Robert Garcia. Okay. Uh, for this for this fight with Roly's. Once I heard that, I'm like, oh, it's over. Game over. Game yeah. over. Roly's is getting smacked. Yeah. Just because I know that Robert Garcia's boxing academy, bro. They fucking I train mean. and they're dogs, bro. Look at look at Marcos mm-hmm. McDonough. Chino Maidana, Look yeah, no, a lot. There was no quitting. Hey, him. Mikey, I mean, he never really Mikey liked Garcia. boxing, Box, yeah. but he was a beast. Yeah, he was good and at it. He was smart enough to look, say, "This is enough," and you know, he gave yeah. the sport good right, years. Right. And then just look at El Rayo; he just became a champion. He shocked the bro. world. You know, that was if you bet I had, money I had that a day. Strong feeling it was going to happen money. just because he was training with Robert Garcia. Yeah. I think that was a a good decision he made to switch uh, trainers. I know he was training with David's dad, uh, but it just didn't work out. I mean. Hey, I can't hate on Team Benavides. He, he has good boxers too, man. He had, oh, that's another name. Uh, everybody's sleeping on the homeboy, Diego Pacheco. Oh, yeah. He just fought. He uh, just knocked. Yeah. Out. He called out Canelo. He said he's ready, that, but I think there's levels to it, you know. Yeah. I think I think Pacheco would be a great fight for uh, Jaime Munguia, who's going to fight uh, this month as well. Hey, uh, Joe Sean James from Sacramento. He's going to fight Joe tomorrow Sean. night. Okay. And that's our boy. He... He don't sleep on him. He's underrated. And his coach, you know, happy birthday, Coach Dre. Mm-hmm. He's underrated as a coach because, I mean, it may be his only, like, big fighter, mm-hmm. but these guys have been able to, like, go toe-to-toe with some pretty big names. Yeah. And what's messed up in the game is they only put him against undefeated fighters. Mm. He's You can't say he has any suspect right, opponents. Right, right. If he's beating unbeaten it's fighters. It's all credible. Yeah. Right, right. David, uh, kind of switching gears here, man, I'm, I'm, it's, it keeps coming back to me just how impressive – it is, uh, you know, the amount of followers that you guys have gotten through Instagram. Mm-hmm. How did you guys do it? I mean, what was there a plan of attack? Like, did you and Jose sit down and say, hey, bro, this is how we're going to do it? Was it accidental? Like, what, what is your guys' plan of attack on building the brand? Because, you know, one thing that we said earlier and we've noticed is you're, you're very social. And you're very good at networking Mm -hmm. and meeting people and and showing love, you know, and you guys give gifts. You know, you guys have given me, you know, a few towels and stuff like that and a little keychain thing. So that's all really cool. But what what can you break that down? Like, how did that how did that happen? You know, zero to one hundred twenty thousand followers, two and a half years, all organic. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you haven't paid anything. Right. What's the what's the formula, man? There's this saying in Mexico, in Spanish, it says preguntando se llega hasta China. Mm. So just reaching out. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of networking. Mm. Hey, bro, you're a true testament of that, too. <laughs> reaching mm-hmm. out, you know? So, shit. Right, right. I think uh, we got I mean, step up our game on that. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Out. So what, What? Um, let's, let's, uh, let's dig a little bit deeper. So what's, what's your role? Like, is your, are you the guy that reaches out? Yes, you know, sir. Jose's more of the. Behind the scenes. Behind he, the he's scenes. more the guy that makes us look like superstars. So I got give, it. I give that out to him. Okay. I, I honestly believe that through mo boxing, no problem. We have been able to show that we can be an asset anywhere. If someone were to pick us up and not trying to make myself be like, I'm the shit, but it's just, we have, I guess you can say a don, they say in Spanish, un don, which mine is to like network and speak without being hesitant. Mm-hmm. I don't have a filter. Whatever I think is what I'm going to say. Right. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Shit. And Jose has a talent that he's really good at marketing. Mm. He can easily be a PR for a big promoter. He can, you know, hand out, he can be the one passing out the media, you know, mm-hmm. you know, sending good people to the right direction. 
So so it's as easy. It's um it's funny because people probably expect a, like a really long answer. deep answer, but it's like. Just talk to people. Yeah, said, I mean, said it with the asking. And by the way, to translate the phrase, which is which I really like it, the phrase is by talking, by asking, asking questions, you can reach China. China from wherever you are. Right, from wherever you are, meaning just talk to people and you'll get answers. So, what are some things? What are some things you say, man? Like, what are some things? You know, uh, all through respect, you know, you know, show people respect and give them their dues where it's owed. And it's funny. Uh, sorry, bro. I, I just got this crazy flashback that uh, I remember my pops would do that, bro. He would tell me like we'll be driving and he'll be like, "Look, this is a test to see what people really know." Mm -hmm. So he'll literally pull over and he'll ask a random person, "Hey, how do I get over here?" My dad knew how to get there, right? And some people be like, ah, you know what? I don't know, or blah, blah, blah yeah. or, oh, yeah, yeah, make a left here and then a right. Uh, like 80% of them were wrong. Only like two people were right type shit. But my dad would, would, would do that so I could learn. Like, hey, when so you got to be knowledgeable. Or, or when somebody asks you something, you have to have some type of knowledge or you got to know your area type shit. Yeah. So I thought, I thought that was cool, the, the phrase that you said right now, because, yeah, just yeah, asking, that talking. That China. Yeah, you'll, you'll and, and David, so send you the wrong way, but you'll get there eventually. So it's it's interesting because um, you know you guys have made the page. You're the one that networks. You're the one that actually does the talking. You have no filter. You're bold. All that. Earlier, you said that growing up, you were also the kid that was shy. You had stage fright. Oh, I, I sometimes I still do. Sometimes you still yeah. do. So how do you overcome that? Yeah, if you don't mind unpacking that a little bit, like I mean, I was the kid that. Nobody ever considered. I was like underdog, you know. Nobody like, yeah, he's just a small kid. I was really short, to be honest. So I, I didn't grow till I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school. Damn. I was really short, so I get a lot of rejection. Like people would second guess hey, me. Short you know? kings matter, man. <laughs> <laughs> so then I just was really shy, and then when every time I would present a project in class, I was shaking and sweating, man. It, mm -hmm. it would just get to me. And then with time, I guess just going through a lot of things in life. I I was pretty, like, scared to mess things up. So then I learned, like, the hard way, I guess you can say. Like, what's the worst thing that, that can happen? You can mm -hmm. just hit rock bottom. And sometimes you have to hit rock bottom because what's the only place you can go once you hit the bottom? As long as you're not in a coffin. Yeah. What are, what are some of those uh, rock bottoms, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, just going remember. through, like, a lot of hardships with the family, like, being the one that, Afraid to ask for anything because there's not enough, and you know there's enough for everyone else, but not for you. Mm -hmm. You know, taking the scraps from the food, and I don't know. I, I think it just made me stronger. So I started trying to work on my own since I was like thirteen, fourteen. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's like the Home Depot workers. You, as a kid, as a teenager, you can post up outside of the swap me, and one of the vendors will help mm -hmm. pay you so you help set up the, the spot mm -hmm. and then if you help them sell you get paid even more mm -hmm. and then you help them take down and pack up right. i used to do that bro in Oxnard. Yeah. yeah so then doing stuff like that but as a kid so that's where all my spanish comes in that's why i'm the translator as well for the channel my spanish is just you know through the roof fluent. yeah so it's nothing so when i was a kid all our vacations my mom was actually the one that had like the hustle in her mm -hmm. you know unfortunately she can do stuff because she has dementia or whatnot but she used to get us ready and her thing was work hard because she was a housekeeper she mm -hmm. would work hard all week and then she'd save up and then she'd go to the callejones in la mm -hmm. and she would just buy a bunch of like clothes that they sell there it's not like the newest stuff mm -hmm. and then she would go to yard sales so you can say hoard, flip it. hoard in a way so mix the good clothes or good clothes but cheap clothes at a good price but looks cool and you and she would mix it in with the stuff that was used from the yard sales and then we have a house in rosarito beach she would take all the stuff that she got she would just get like these big old like, i guess you can call them uh how, how would you say like luggage carriers mm -hmm. like maletas like big yeah, ones yeah. we call them chorizos because they look like big chorizos mm -hmm. sausage links like huge ones and she would have us go with her. Oh, we're going on vacation. Mm -hmm. So our vacation was going to Rosarito, and then she would keep mixing up the stuff. But by that time, she was already getting in touch with all the officials at the checkpoints. Mm. And she like get, like, you know, when you have to go out of the country, you have to, what, what do you call that? When, declare? 
Yeah. 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 So you, you have to declare how much stuff you're bringing. So she would get stamped. I guess she'd pay like a little fee like to get stamped that she was bringing stuff. Mm -hmm. And that same paper she would use at the border check line from San Diego to Tijuana. Mm -hmm. She would keep that same document and then she would fill up way more stuff. Mm -hmm. And she would cut a deal with the bus drivers from Tijuana to Nayarit, where we're from. And there's the biggest checkpoint in Sonora, in Sonoita. And that's the hardest checkpoint. If you can get past there from here south, you basically can, like, take anything down there. Mm -hmm. So she would show that same document. Hey, I already declared in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. and, but what you don't know is that there's a hustle to it. Every person that's on that bus ride, because it was on bus, everyone has to, my mom would be, like, the one in charge of doing the, the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this seat, how much stuff do you have? And some people would lie, like, oh, we don't have much, but they would be doing the same thing as yeah, my yeah. mom. Uh -huh. Hell no, I saw you bring, like, 20, <laughs> 20 cases. <laughs> You're going to pay whatever, because they would have to pitch in, bro, to bribe the officials. Uh -huh. So on top of that, document, my mom was cool in case we had to, like, oh, everyone's going to be inspected. My mom was already clear. She was already inspected yeah. from over here. Uh -huh. But she would just do that to make the process go by faster. Smoother. So as, as soon as that was, all her stuff was going to make it to, to sell. So she would resell this clothes in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I guess, like, stuff like that is, like, that's what got me to learn Spanish. And then when I would get there, I thought I was on vacation, right? Mm -hmm. So then my mom, I was like, hey, I want this and that. No, go, go work for it. Mm -hmm. So then I'd wake up at four or five in the morning. And go sell. I would no. I would go um to the cattle. Milk the cows. I would go milk cows. And then that same milk, I would go that same morning and go house by house and pour it in pitchers or, you know, sell it. Damn. And then on top of that, they I would have to go see the whole process of how they made the cheese. Uh -huh. And then I would go help work at the tortilla, like the stands. Uh -huh. There's like there's like factories, but it's like a stand where like, oh quiero un kilo de tortillas. Like people buy the tortillas right there, like handmade, like awesome on the spot so i would do that and then that's what i would get my money to spend out in mexico you were born here though right santa yeah and how many siblings do you have oh it's uh three girls from both parents it's mm -hmm. three girls and two boys so i have an older brother and three sisters Damn. and then i have a, a half brother from on my dad's side yeah i can relate on all that man like those experiences especially when you go visit the motherland yeah. and you see the you struggle know, the poverty the struggle yeah. like those are moments you never forget. Like, I think I may have talked about this maybe in like a different podcast, but for me, as you were talking, I was getting flashbacks of when I would go to Honduras. Okay. And that's where my family's from. And, you know, everybody, there's, it's, it's all the roads are rocks, mm -hmm. you know, or dirt roads. And I just remember, um, I remember being like 10 or 11 and uh, other kids pointing me out when I went to go visit, like my first time as a teenager that I could remember. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I was, I'd been there before, but I was younger and I, I don't have a lot of memory of that, but I do remember a couple things. So I remember kids being like, oh, like, dang, he has Levi's on. Oh, mm -hmm. shit, look at his, look at his Nike. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, to me coming from the States is like, oh, this is normal. Mm -hmm. It's some regular shit. Like, why are they so amazed at my jeans? And my, but you start learning that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it, it, there's nothing like you, you could read this shit all day in a textbook you know, oh, people are poor over here. This is how life, but it's a whole different experience when you actually go to a different country. You experience that yourself. Another one is one of my cousins where we were eating. Uh, estamos comiendo sandía. Okay. You know, I'm fucking watermelon. I, I think I'm doing my thing. Like I'm putting in work for this watermelon. <laughs> you know, I think I'm done. I'm about to throw this shit away. My cousin, hey, primo, no, no, no. Let me say the sandía. <laughs> give it to him and he fucking eats like there's a whole another layer to, that to I miss. the core yeah. and it just you think moments like that bro moments like that where yeah just, just, but that to me was like damn like yeah. you know the, the appreciation for food for clothing it just exposes you so that's way. some yeah that's some real It'll shit be like man. that brother yeah. yeah so look then going back to that the kids they would think that i was coming from here with money or whatever whatever but they weren't knowing that the money that I had was what I would earn over there. Over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I wouldn't think much of it because, you know, at the time you're a kid, I would bust out like 200 pesos and like, oh, is it for everyone? What? Mm -hmm. I would just, that was just me, you know, me being me. You've always been like that. Exactly. Very yeah. Generous. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 like I my mom actually took us one time. I guess that was like one of the best things, one of the coolest things that we were like teenagers. Um, she took us to a Chivas game. 
I'm not a Chivas fan. I'm a Pachuca fan. But since that's the closest. Pachuca. Mm. Yeah. That's the closest team to us in, in Nayarit. It's Guadalajara. Did you guys ever have a Pavón on your team? Nah. Pavón? Yeah. Carlos Pavón? No. no we I had, know Morelia had him. We had an Andreño. El Tyson Nunez. Tyson Nunez. Yes, yeah. sir. El, he was good. Short, little yeah. black drag at you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Pachuca, right? They, Pachuca yeah, FC. They won a couple championships. I remember they, they had a... Chucky Lozano. They had a, yeah, like a yeah, two-year yeah. era where they won championships back-to-back. Yeah. yeah. Type shit. Yeah, with uh, Chaco Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, they had the dream team, 06, 05. They went and they won the tournament in Chile, the Sudamericana in Chile. Mm-hmm. With the young Alexis Sanchez and mm. Arturo Vidal. Oh, yeah, you had yeah. some ballers back then. Yeah. No, they beat that team with those guys. Oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that team was solid. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. So your mom took you to Chivas game. She took the homeboys, and then yeah. So even then, preguntando llegas hasta China. Mm-hmm. So we <laughs> we go to the movies, and they gave us a ride to the mall, and we're staying like let's say like a five mile radius, like from the hotel where we're staying at to the theater, and then after the movie, we're like, all right, are we gonna try to walk it back, or was was happening? So we're like, okay, we we can make it walking. And dude, we Five were miles. just like going through like mazes, you know, just you know, risking getting mugged out there because you know how it is. Yeah. And we like, okay, we just get a little bit lost, and we're like, hey, where's the hotel? Where's the hotel? You know? And then we're like, oh man, we're screwed. And we asked for a taxi, and we were like just two blocks down. Oh, we were, like we were almost there, but we yeah. just you know we made a wrong turn, mm-hmm. yeah. and the guy took us right there, and it wasn't expensive. So yeah. Uh, brother, one thing. Um. I, I, I caught there's things you've said that, you know, I'm, I'm keeping in mind because I want to come back to them and maybe we can, you know, wrap it up on this. Um, but one of the f- things you said in the beginning where we asked you, why are you like this? You know, why are you so generous and kind? I and think I just got the answer right there. Or well, as I'm hearing you speak, I, I, the answer is it goes back to your roots and what you've seen and, and how you grew up and going to Mexico and and. and it's like it's like when I go to Mexico, bro, with my cousins and shit like that. Like I want to show them a good time because obviously the dollar is worth a little more over there. So when I'm there, it's like oh, like all that it's on me. Like I got it type shit. You guys don't gotta pay for anything or just giving them a shirt or clothes or shoes shit like that. Mm-hmm. But I think that 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 gets instilled in you. It's in a it's like a level of appreciation that a hey, like. You guys think I have a good type thing, but the reality is different. Yeah. But I know you guys got it a little worse, you know. Unfortunately, you know, being where you guys are from. But if I could just help just a little bit, you know, eliminate some of your worries type yeah. shit. So I think I think I got the answer right there. Like it just goes to your roots and the way you were built, and also the hustle that your mom instilled in you. That yeah, and wanting everyone to be a part of the same winning team. Right. So, to, so for everybody to feel that yeah. that that so, that that feeling of. Being a part of something mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that my my question actually was a little bit different. My my question was going to be: You said, um, what was it exactly you said? Where you were like, you know, I don't, I don't, I want to put, I want to help others win. Like I don't see why I shouldn't. Right. What? Why? Why is your perspective that? And not like, you know, off camera, we kind of talked a little bit about this whole concept of gatekeeping. Right. You know, people that. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of a fear-based mindset where there's not enough space at the top. There's not enough food for everybody to eat. Therefore, like, oh, it's just me and Mar, just me and Victor, Marvic. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I'm all boxing or fucking this and that. Uh, we're not gonna really put you. Again, you've 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 you not only talk about it, but you've been about it. Like, you open the doors for for us to get into certain events. And so, what where? Maybe not so much where, but why? Why do you think that's better to think that way than to not? Because, again, you didn't have to open doors. It could just be more more eyes for you, more viewers for you, more clout for you, more money for y'all. Mm-hmm. But you don't mind sharing it. Why? Let me ask you this. How many times do we live as a human being? One time. I mean, every day. No, like how many times do how you live? Lives? Like how many lives do we have? One. Yeah. But I live every day. I get it. Okay. Yeah. But in that whole life, would you like to be remembered as a guy who was an asshole and a gatekeeper or as a guy that paved the way for you to success? Of course. So you're thinking about remembrance. You're thinking about how leaving a a good mark, like a good impact in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And you feel like the the gatekeeper is really more selfish. That that good can overcome evil. Amen. I like that. 
It's like to this the, thing I used to see when I used to watch videos like on how like the Holy Spirit, like you're not trying to get too religious, but not, so no, there's no. this this <laughs> video where this guy is doing like a, I guess a, a, a symbolism. So he has beer, soda, vinegar, and then water. Mm-hmm. And the water is like a lot. Right. And he pours the cup and it's like a beer or the soda is black. And then he pours the beer and gets brown. Mm-hmm. And that's just like our how bad like sin comes our way. Mm-hmm. But that's the, on, what's the only thing that can overcome all that. Vinegar, Jesus' blood. No, like the vinegar changes color and like it, it changes. But what's the one thing that if you over pour Eventually, it's going to be pure and clean if you over pour it over everything. Bryce, you're yeah. white. You know this. Is it gas or the water? Water. Yeah, okay. water. I, I said Living water. water. Yeah. So I, I said bright. water, right? I said oh. water. Yeah. So if you keep yeah, I was pouring water, you'll, you'll clean anything you know, with, with water eventually. Yeah. That's amen to that. So, wait, why why are you sharing that? <laughs> oh, because you're saying that, that, that the good can overcome evil oh, in, in life, you know, and, and I feel like, like if we can do it and be the guys that. Left more that more mark, water. not not just in boxing itself, but the community. You know, mm-hmm. like it's life, everyone. Life, for man. water. I I I, I, like I, I believe, bro, that you that gotta means. operate from a, a a a state of mind of abundance. Right. Like that's it's enough for everybody. And and you know, being in the insurance industry, I remember like when we first got in it, uh, the mentor at the time he would say, "There's enough. There's enough fish for everybody. Mm-hmm. There's enough clientele for everybody. You don't because right. people would have that mindset. Where it was like, oh, I don't want to." introduce this person to this person because he might steal my client type shit whereas like you don't got to think that way there's enough for everybody to eat you know so there's enough fishes in the pond as they say but i the way i live my life is a, a state of mind of abundance where i'm not afraid to network or, or you know show connects and shit like this to a certain extent because the the way the the way life is bro you do good good is going to come back to you you give god is going to bless you 10 times more and not, and I'm not saying give just because of that saying, like, oh, I'm gonna give because God said I'm not. Like when you genuinely give from your heart and you do good and you put good out there, trust me, God always pays you back and delivers way more. And like I said, we don't expect anything. We don't expect like, oh, because you did this, we expect like right. favors. We just expect like, you know, spread the love. Yeah, you know? spread the love. That one was that one movie where the kid dies in the end. Spoil alert. But <laughs> the whole project of the movie is for him to, like, put on three people. Uh-huh. And then those three people have to put on another three people. And pay it forward. Mm. Well, I it's not about, that paying, it, about pay, right. paying it forward, brother. Yeah. That's, that's really what it is, bro. Yeah. You just guide people the right way as much as you can. Just pay it forward. Somebody did it for you. It's only right you do it back. Why not? Type shit. Yeah. I, like you said in the beginning, bro, we don't lose anything from it. Yeah. Yeah, and it costs nothing. And it's all going to go away eventually. It costs nothing, bro, to show love. And it's all going to be gone. We're going to be mm-hmm. gone. A new generation of people. But what are they going to remember? Yeah. Our values. The love. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, David, is there anything, um, you know, before we wrap it up, but is there anything that you want to maybe announce to yeah. your viewers? Or no, I, I like to show love and support for everyone that's been down with us, just like our brothers here. Marvik, you know, thank you guys for bringing me on, giving me a, a platform to share Welcome. what, what Mo Boxing is all about. And salute to our boys at Overhand. Mm-hmm. I they're, like that. I've been looking they're, at they're, it. Yeah, they're a brand that, that they're willing to sponsor boxers and like they sell like merchandise and stuff. What's mm-hmm. the O? Oh, what is that? Is it's that a, Overhand. It's, it's a hand. It's a oh, fist. it's a hand. Yeah, it's, it's, a, fist. Oh, it's a fist. Uh-huh. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah, uh, Freddie, you know, he's a good boxing trainer. He got the concept that, you know, he used to see and deal with a lot of bullying. Mm -hmm. So he started training kids so they wouldn't get bullied. And then he's like, hey, let's do a a brand, you know, a Mm -hmm. brand that. I like that. And we're like, hey, we're willing to, you know, network with you guys. And if you guys, if there's anything we can do for you guys, we're all up for it. So I'm just, you know, showing appreciation to Oran. And our boys, uh, my boy Caesar, uh, another guy that I love. I, I've like taken a liking to him and built that strong connection, like the Godfather. Not saying that he's taking your place, Godfather, mm-hmm. but <laughs> yeah, my boy Caesar and uh, his team from uh, Dior Dental Experts of Riverside. So, and they also make mouthpieces. Okay. So I'm sure they've made a mouthpiece for uh, Raúl Curiel. Okay. They've worked with him, and yeah, those guys. You know, those are other guys that I want to see like come up, like the underdogs, the new guys. You know, these this. It's time to make moves, like, for the future of boxing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, eventually, it's like everything. Things have to change. We got to mm-hmm. accept change and, and, and new Evolve. things. So, yeah, Dior. And, yeah, they're, they're, dude, the, the list can be endless. But yeah. 
Shout out to our friends and our good, good, um, close relationship with Marv. Uh, what is Marv it? Nation. Marv, Nation Marv Nation Promotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the small promoters, you know, Elite, uh, Toscano. There's just so many, man. Uh, Showtime's a new one that's coming up out here in Long Beach, so I'm pretty okay. sure we can go hit up some shows soon. Gotcha. And, yeah, everyone, everyone, you know, in general, you know, out in Mexico, you got Muta Boxing, Sun for Boxing. If I don't remember your name or if I don't mention you, doesn't mean that you're not added to the right. list. Just shout out to everybody. Yeah, shout out to everyone. <laughs> everybody that fucks with Mo Boxing, shout out to you. Yeah, everybody that's been down with yeah. us. And uh, for all our viewers oh, as well. Sorry, oh, sorry, go, sorry. Go, I'm go, sorry, brother. Go ahead. So, yeah, so the, the team, the crew, we got our boy Skywalker who helps us out in the Arizona, New Mexico. He, he's a native of Albuquerque, so he's out there. Skywalker because he cleans windows, so he's like with the rope and he cleans windows. He's walking uh, the sky. Okay. And we got our boy uh, Star Wars, Lucas Sports. He's our Spanish. He's the one that we, uh, to be honest, the the, the best oh, funniest. Lucas Sports just added me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, okay. the best funniest interviews you'll get are Lucas Sports and me in Spanish. Got so it. So we it. we get down, and yeah, you guys, you know, you guys are. We can always, you know, run into people and get right. some shit going. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. and then. Uh, or yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah. we gotta to get Marvin. back out there. You know, salute to El Curtido. You yeah. know, we gotta. Curtido, go back. Marvin, we're coming back. Coming back. We're coming yeah, back. Sure. <laughs> Mar- Marvin and double. his wife Marlene. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, final man uh, for our viewers. Make sure to tap in with David Mo Boxing. No problems. And your personal Instagram. Sports Intunes at Sports N the letter N T U N E S. So it's not Sports and Tunes. Sports N Tunes. Does Jose have one? Uh, Jose a is it, no. he has a personal one. It's at Jose Manharis, but he usually likes Mo-boxing. to just keep it Boxing. Mo-boxing. Yeah. At Mo Boxing, no problem. There it is, man. Well, thank you guys for watching another episode of Marvick Productions, and uh, you know we're, we're gonna start putting out more content as well. Yeah, give us a follow, subscribe, comment, whatever. If you want to talk shit about us and hate on us, please do so. It doesn't yeah. matter. Throw it in the all, comment all section all how love. much you fucking hate us. It's all uh, good. <laughs> Bryce, what's your Instagram? Let's put it up there, too. You know my Instagram? <laughs> hey, and good job on the production, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Uh, it's much Bri- love. Bryce, Bryce Byrne. So it's B-R-Y-C-E-B-E-R-N. Add him. Add him. Get Show him. him some love. We're going to be working. DMs. We're going to be working. Let's get it. Send him some photos. Peace.